Welcome everybody. My name is Bev Peterson. I'm with the Transition Services Liaison Project and we are putting together um, this video to share with you some of the important information that we typically share at our Catch the Wave event. Um, so we have several guests today and I would like to have um, them introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about um, who they are and what their role is. So Rosa, I guess I'll start with you. Hi everyone, I'm Rosa. Um, I was a former student at USD. I graduated back in 2018. Um, so a little background story is that when I was in college, well, before I was in college, I was never diagnosed with dyslexia. But when college came along, I kind of noticed that I was stumbling a little bit, not understanding things as well when I was in college, when I took my courses. And so sometime my junior year, I decided to go down to USD down on campus in Vermilion. And I got a um, little like tested and whatnot with like different things. And they diagnosed me with dyslexia. And so um, I, I believe I was still there and they told me about the accommodations that I can get. And so they told me the person that I can go to, which is Karen. And so I was at University Center before they changed it to USD Community College. But so I was talking to Karen and she told me about the accommodations that I can get. And, um, and so I was like, okay, I'm gonna go try them out. And so she told me about the Echo Pen. I was like, at first I was a little hesitant. I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work out. And so she's like, give it two weeks and if you don't like it, you can just give it back to me. And so she gave me this lovely notebook, special notebook that um, I can write down and record things, which, it was, which I thought it was weird. But <laughs> um, so I could tell you a little bit about this book. So basically this book, um, they have a little page that says record, stop, and pause. So as you hit the button for record and start writing, um, like for example, if you are trying to write something down and you miss what he said that brief second or minute, um, you can go back to it again after you hit stop. And, and so after I tried it out, I was like, yeah, this is a lifesaver for sure. Um, and so after that point, I continued to use it. And as I used it, I felt more comfortable. And I don't know, I recommend that for many people. And then with some other um, combinations that I had is I have difficulty reading what I read to myself. And so I had um, one of my professors read the exams for me and I took the exam. And, um, and so that helped me a lot. And they also gave me time and a half, which helps me quite a bit for the online tests and quizzes that I took, which was a huge, huge thing. And it was amazing. And so um, I'm trying to think, is, <laughs> is there okay. anything else you well, want to know? Or? That, that's fine. That, this is a, that's a great start. And we will maybe, you know, come back um, and have you talk more about one or two of those things that you've already mentioned. But in the meantime, we're gonna switch and um, have Karen introduce herself and tell us a little bit about your role and yes, how you and Rosa got connected. Okay, hi everybody, I'm Karen Gerdy and I am uh, the Director of Disability Services at USD. Um, uh, I've been at USD for, I think I'm going on four years now. Um, prior to that, I had been at uh, North, Northern State University, and then I had also worked at the School for the Blind for a few years, too, so that's kind of my background. Um, across the is we work, we work with students on campus, we work with online students, we work with students that are in our distance program, so we have students in Rapid City, um, in Pier, we have students in Sioux Falls, um, and then, yeah, of the, the, the locations. Um, so we work with those students uh, all, in all different locations and our process is really we want the student to get a hold of us first thing either by email 
um, or by phone. <laughs> the way things are going right now, email is really working best. And then we get back to the student as soon as we can and walk you through that process. Um, as far as Rosa went, I think we got connected through the person who was in the office up in Sioux Falls. That they, they, They've got a contact person up at, uh, it used to be called University Center, now it's Community College for Sioux Falls through USB, um, and we still have contacts up there. The advisors, the academic advisors are our contacts. So a student there could just get in touch with them, and then those people will put the student in touch with us, and then we'll walk the, through, the student through the process. So I don't know, Bev, if you want me to discuss, discuss now kind of what that process is, or if we want to go another direction. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that would be good that you could um, describe describe what happens and I think it's really important you had just mentioned that they got in touch with you or Rosa got Rosa had to get in touch with an office um, you know you guys were you guys are not going to know that a student's out there needing help or services unless they um, initiate contact somehow right right that's right and I hadn't thought about um, saying it that way but a student a student does need to self-disclose or they need to let us know um, themselves that they want services. So um, say you've had services all through high school and then you go into college, um, the, the disability services person is not going to know necessarily who you are or they're not going to know that you want services until you contact them. So um, even if I know a student that's coming because I do some events, well all, a lot of the, the, the uh, college disability services providers do events with transition services, so we, we do meet students, but even if we know a student is coming to our campus, we don't reach out to them until they come to us. So that's really up to the student to do that and to decide to ask for those services. So um, that's where that self-advocacy piece is really important. So when you're in high school, if you can just learn to um, you know, know what your disability is, know what accommodations are helpful for you, and then maybe even practice with your high school special ed teacher. How do you, how do you even talk to the person in disability services and what do you say to them and how do you approach them? Um, and at most of the colleges have a pretty simple um, process. We have a, a two page form at, our, at USD that we have the student fill out, got some basic information on there. Um, and then we do ask the student to provide us documentation. So with a lot of students, that's the, um, their IEP, um, we usually want a copy of their evaluation as well. So we want that what's called a psychoeducational evaluation if it's a learning disability or a few different other kinds of disabilities. Um, if it's a sensory disability, we would want documentation from their medical provider. If it's a psychiatric issue, we would want documentation from their psychiatrist, their psychologist, their counselor, whoever knows them best and who's made the diagnosis. So. We will help the student figure out um, like where that documentation needs to come from because it might be a little overwhelming trying to figure out, okay, I filled out this form, but now what, do, what else do I need to give the person at the college? You know, what do I tell them or give them? We'll walk them through that and help them figure out what we need. And if what we get isn't what we need necessarily, we'll be back in touch as soon as possible to let them know. And then once we have that in place, we'll walk them through what the accommodations are. Like with Rosa, I, I'm, I can't remember specifically, but I, made, I bet I made a trip from, from Vermilion and went up to Sioux Falls and we probably sat down and talked and, and discussed what might be helpful to her. And then I made the recommendations and she decided whether she wanted to, to use those or not. So I think that's another big, um, big thing to remember too as a student is you get to decide what accommodations you're going to use. Use. We don't decide that for you. That's that's your decision. So um, if you get into services and you decide you've got a class where you don't need um, that extra time on tests, you might think you're fine in one class, but you need them in another class. And so that's that's the up to the student to decide um, from class to class. So so that's kind of the general process. So it, you know, it, it certainly sounds to me that from what I've heard so far is one of the biggest takeaways from what we have talked about is it is on you as the student to let 
somebody know that you need help or need support. And in Rose's case, you know, she did not have a diagnosed disability or an, or an IEP when you were in high school. You didn't find that out until you were in college, but still to get the help that you needed, you had to figure out who to go and talk to and, and knew that you needed to let somebody know. Um, and that is just such a big component of, of all of this because typically students all through their school years from kindergarten through 12th grade, whenever it was that they started you know, receiving special education services, typically it's your parents or a family member who advocates for you, who is kind of that mediator between school and, and, and home and letting the school know what you need. But once you get out of high school and enter into the post-secondary world, it is totally up to you and your responsibility to um, initiate those things. So that, that is one of the biggest takeaways, I would say. And then, so once you do get hooked up with disability services, um, that person can take it from there and can, you know, guide you through the whole rest of that process. And, and Karen, is it true that it, the process might look slightly different depending on the campus that you're on, but, but overall, you know, you have the same guiding principles of how you are going to assist or support students. That's right. It'll it'll look it'll look pretty similar on each campus. It'll look probably a lot different than it did in high school. You know, we don't sit down each year and have a meeting um, as far as going through a specific plan the way an IE works or even a 504 plan. Um, ours is more as needed. So we definitely want to see a student at the beginning of each semester so that we can check, you know, they check in with us, let us know if they need accommodations for that semester, and then we get things into place for that particular semester. And then we do that every semester just to make sure they're they're on the right track with accommodations. Um, and I think I would I would think it's pretty similar to each each uh, college or tech school is going to be pretty similar as far as how that's handled. You know, the big part of that again is, like you said a minute ago, if I don't hear from a student, I assume they just don't want accommodations for that semester. So if I don't hear from you, you know, you've been, you've been in in the fall and then we get to February and we're in the spring semester and I haven't heard from you, I'll just assume you don't need the, the accommodations whereas the student might be assuming that they're in place for that following semester, but they're not. Um, and we tell the student that, but I also think students get told a lot, you know, you get a lot of information when you get to college, information overload. But the big thing to remember um, is to come in every semester and meet with the, the disability services person. Is that, do you think that's pretty accurate, Rosa, that you need to check in each semester? Yes. But for me, um, when I got tested, like the cognitive te testing at USD, it was kind of halfway through the semester. Mm. And so at that point, I didn't realize that I could get accommodations from it until I met you. Um, so basically, you explain what kind of accommodations I could get since I'm new to it. And so, um, and I did, like, I did email you a couple of weeks before the semester started to let you know I would like to continue it. And then you gave me a form to give the, to the professor to sign and give you a copy if I'm correct. <laughs> yep, that's right. Okay. <laughs> good and that's, you, a good, so. that's a good point. I'm glad you said that because um, something I hadn't thought to mention is you can come in at any time. It doesn't have to be at the beginning of the semester. Like, you know, say you're a freshman and you decide you wanna try it without accommodations. <laughs> I would not recommend that. I would recommend you come in and get them in place and then decide whether you want to use them or not. But say you've just decided you don't want to use accommodations, but you get into like October and you're really struggling and you're thinking, oh, I didn't go to disability services, so now I can't go there at all this semester. Well, that's not true. You can come in anytime and we'll, we'll do what we can. Now, we can't do anything that happened before that. Like, we can't put any accommodations. You can't take a test over and get the accommodations. You can't do anything like that.
but from that from then going forward we can definitely help out and the same if you've never uh, applied for accommodations at all you know we have students come in from the first day of the semester almost through the last day of the semester applying for accommodations and registering for services um, and i'm sure it's the same at the other schools too so it can happen anytime and you know even if it's halfway through the semester at least you're getting that help from mid-semester on and then from semesters after that so you know it's really never too late and like you know rosa with you starting part way through your program you know at least it wasn't your senior year that you started accommodations oh, you know so yeah so it's a, it's never too late right. to get those things rolling right and um okay so rosa earlier you were talking about um, some of the accommodations that you did receive then once you um, got hooked up with Karen. So you've talked, you talked about the um, echo pen and the notebook. I, you probably don't have the pen itself no, anymore because that was provided by, that was actually provided to you by USD, correct? Correct. I don't have the pen. Right, right. Um, but using that pen and that notebook was certainly a big help for you. Um, and what were some of the other accommodations that you said you used? You had extra time on tests? Yep, time and a half. Um, and then I also had the professor read the questions to me, at least one specific class. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other accommodations I had. Okay. I think those are the three major ones. And then also to allow, um, oh no, that was the echo pen that I was recording in class. Uh, oh, and to also give PowerPoints as well ahead of time. So then that way I have the, all the notes that he has on the PowerPoint. And I can focus to write new information versus what he has on the board already. Um, and, and so between you and Karen or the Disability Services Office helped um, accomplish that or, or, or make the instructors aware where that those were things that you needed. Did you ever experience problems with any of the instructors in getting any of these accommodations that you needed? I or have not came into any issues whatsoever. I hope I don't ever go through issues, but um, otherwise, when it comes to online classes, I don't really need accommodations to like echo pens because everything's provided online and I can go back and like listen to the recording that the professors had or instructors um, so that I don't have like there's few classes that I could get accommodations for or like kind of limit my accommodations for if that makes sense. Right. right. Okay. Um, yeah. But and that's a, oops, that's a good point Bev. Um, if a student would have an issue with a professor, we would certainly want the student to let us know, you know, don't just let it go the whole semester and then maybe not pass the class because the professor may have missed an email or there may have been a miscommunication. Um, we will always urge the student to make that contact themselves. Like we, we won't, um, we'll expect them to be part of that process to talk to the professor, but we also will reach out to the professor in certain situations too. So it's kind of a combined effort, um, but, but we do put that on the student. I mean, it's not, I think uh, as students go through high school, sometimes their parents advocate for them a lot. And um, that's great for that setting, but in the, in the college setting, we expect the student, student to advocate for themselves, but we're there for support. And, you know, we can help kind of coach the student as far as, what to say the, to the professor. I mean, in the past, I've kind of helped a student put an email together if they're just really struggling with how to express themselves, that sort of thing. I think the important thing is to just not let it go and decide that you that there's no, no uh, resolution or there's no way to solve the problem. Definitely reach out to the Disability Services Office and, and talk to us and we'll help them through that. Right. And I think a lot of the offices stay pretty busy too and so kind of in in my world no news is good news so if I don't hear from a student once again I assume everything's going just fine um, we just don't always have the the uh, the time in the day really to reach out to every single student and ask them how they're doing all the time um, as much as in my heart I would like to do that a lot more 
um, time always time doesn't always allow that. So, and they are, you know, the students are adults and they're expect to let us, expected to let us know if they're struggling with something. Um, you know, in my world, if I'm struggling with something and I don't tell my supervisor or don't expect myself, then that's really on me and not on my, my boss if they're not figuring that out. So that's how I look at that. They, you know, it's got to come from the student. Right, right. Um, well, yeah, I think both of you have hit on what I think are some of the most important points is that, you know, stu student needs to initiate these things. You are an adult now, like Karen just said, you're, you are over 18 or over. And so this responsibility falls on you. However, once you make that um, connection with the disability services office, then you do have that person in your corner, so to speak. However, you cannot, as a student, you cannot think that, oh, okay, so I know that she will take care of all of this for me. You need to, you need to touch base, you need to check in at least every semester to, to let the Disability Services Office know that you continue to want and need, mm -hmm. you know, the accommodations. So it's nice to know that there is somebody there, there is someone there for you, but you need to take the initiative to um, A, make sure that you get those services going, and then B, that you keep them going as long as you need it by you being the person to reach out to your disability services right. staff. So, and I, um, I think another thing I'd like to add is we, you know, we, we do provide that assistive tech, um, some of it at USD. You know, we've got uh, the Echo Smart Pens and then the, the Kurzweil software um, that some students can use. Um, but I still always urge students to contact the VR, voc vocational rehabilitation and get connected with them so they get that support through college because um, there's stuff that Voc Rehab provides to students that um, might be really helpful that we don't have right on hand necessarily. Um, even with the Kurzweil software, it's a like it's a, a you, an institutional account, so it's not a standalone software. It has to be you have to be online to use it through through our account. And I believe if you get it through Voc Rehab, it's a standalone, and you can use it pretty much anywhere you are. So um, you know that would be something for them to talk to their Voc Rehab counselor about. So uh, I'm I'm. I think I've seen a change over the years where students are becoming more aware of voc rehab and getting connected to them, but we still have a few students that come in that, um, once again, I think it's information overload. They get a lot of information in high school about a, a variety of different services, and they don't always access them because there's just so much out there. <laughs> um, so it's good to know um, it's good for students to know to hook up with Voc Rehab before they get to college. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. And again, Rose's situation is somewhat unique or a little mm -hmm. bit different than a lot of the students coming in who, again, if, if they have been receiving special education services in the school setting, the K-12 to setting, um, hopefully um, through transition planning as part of their IEP, they have been made aware of agencies like vocational rehabilitation and, and other agencies that might be able to provide some services and support programs to them. So for a lot of students, they have already made that connection, but, but with Rosa not, not having that um, diagnosis when she was in school, it's a little bit different right, for her. Right, and there are, um... There are other support services on campuses as well. You know, there most campuses have some sort of uh, support for tutoring and for study skills and for career planning, that sort of thing. That's not through disability services usually on most campuses, um, but most campuses have those types of supports available. So that I would just recommend that if you go on a campus tour that you ask the admissions person about that sort of support um, because it's not, it's not always just disability services that supports our students. It's, it's our office, it's the counseling center, it's the people in student activities, it's the housing people. You know, it's a, it's a whole group, group effort there as far as helping students be successful.